Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's live. Uh, today, I'm coming live to answer a question that I get asked all the time, which is, Maya, how can I play fast? <laughs> so I am coming here to share five tips to enable you to get there. OK, um, everybody is completely um, infatuated by playing fast. It's something that, again, I get asked a lot. Um, so here are the five things. OK, number one, know that playing fast is not a measure for success. So like, oh, you're telling me that. You know, you're, you're here to teach me how to play fast, but you're telling me that not to play fast. Um, so playing fast is just a tool of expression that is important to get. But by no means, it is a measure of, for success. Um, I cannot tell you how many times my students come to me and say, uh, we feel like a failure for not being able to play as fast as we would like to. Um, some of my students were, you know, shouted at for not playing fast enough or made um, to feel uncomfortable or, you know, inadequate. Um, I'm here to tell you that playing fast is not a measure for success. It's, it's a completely overrated thing. <laughs> um, it's just a tool, again. Um, but it's not a measure for like getting there, okay? What's the measure for success? Is playing something in a clean, clear way where I, I get the music, I feel the music. That's way more important. Um, I, I do shredding on my instrument, I enjoy it, uh, but you, you don't need to have that in order to succeed. And then if you want more about that, then go to the five stages of the Qanun Success Path because I go deeper into that. You start to playing, um, you know, um, compositions and, and longat, which are fast technical pieces in between stage three and four. So it's much further down the path, yeah? Every stage has its own unique um, list of um, things that you need to go, okay, check, I've done that and you need to ignore the rest, okay? If you're a beginner, it's really the, it should be the last thing you should think about. Um, so that with that said, <laughs> uh, I'm now I'm going to go into uh, point number two, which is, which will help you to get there uh, if you are um, stage three onwards. Um, you need to practice the right way. I cannot tell you how many people come to me and they say, okay, Maya, we, we just like to do it. And I go like, okay, so show me your, how do you structure your practice? Um, and they go, it just, there's no structure. I just sit and I doodle a noodle away and, and the time pass, passes and, 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 and that's it. <laughs> um, go watch the fundamentals of practice, uh, how to practice. Uh, live, I'll link to that in the in the description, which shows you exactly how to practice. The bit that everybody skips is the first bit, uh, which is where you do warm ups. You know, you do the warm up with your right hand, and you do the warm up with the left hand, um, and then you do it together, and you increase the speed systematically. Um, it's like you know, if you're an athlete, um, you are trying, you know, to uh, build your stamina, you cannot skip your warm up. <laughs> you cannot. Um, it's just not possible to get to uh, a level where you are um, strong and fast and you know you are in command of your instrument, your body, um, unless if you don't warm up. Many people just don't do that, which is a, a humongous mistake. So number two, you need to practice the right way. And again, I'll link to that video, which I go into depth into how you need to structure your, your practice and pay specific attention to the first part because that's where the gold is. Most people are not interested so much in it, but th the truth is it's, it's where you build your strength and your stamina, okay? Number three, um, adopt 
adapt the puzzle mindset. So um, think of a musical piece as a puzzle. So say I am trying to learn um, um, longer, longer, um, uh, longer now. So this one. Okay, so I am not gonna get here just like that. I need to think of each piece, each phrase as a piece of a puzzle that I need to focus on. Um, and when I master that piece of the puzzle, then I start to move on to the next piece of the puzzle. And then I start to put them together. Example, taking the example of Longa and Hawand. So I have this first phrase. <laughs> Say it's tricky for you. It's most often that people get one piece, one one part of, of a musical piece that, that you're learning that they go like, oh, it's tricky. So you need to focus on that section. It can be half a measure. It can be three notes. Um, you need to break it down. And that ties into how you practice. But many people go like, Oh, we played the piece a couple of times and should be fine. And then you go back and then you find out that you haven't, you haven't improved because they didn't zoom in into that small piece of the puzzle before expanding the vision and going into the, um, you know, the view of the entire piece. So, so say I have, I have difficulty in, in, in playing this bit. So I, I focus on it and I loop it. I just literally loop it. Once I have that, then I'll go into the next piece. Okay, this one, I'll, if this is tricky, I'll loop it on its own um, 10 times. And then I, once I have that, I'll put both together. It's like a puzzle. Etc. etc. Okay, so adapt the puzzle, building a puzzle mindset rather than going for the entire thing, you know, and just trying to master the piece just like that. Doesn't work, okay? Number four, which is something I say so much in my lessons, slow down. <laughs> you need to slow down in order to speed up, okay? Um, and again, if you are trying to learn a fast piece, you need to play it super slow. <laughs> <laughs> like a sloth <laughs> in order to be able to play it fast. Most people skip that. So, so say I, I want to, again, going back to the example of, of, of Longa and Hawand, I need to play the skeleton, which is just the bare bone melody, no ornamentation, no nothing, super slow in the beginning. So this is how it might look like. People don't want to do that, which is why they when when they try to get to playing things fast, then it doesn't work. So that takes me to um, point number five. Once you have achieved playing the melody, the the skeleton of the melody in a clean, clear way that respects the rhythm. So you have honored the the rhythm because you know you and and this is something you must build on early on in your journey, which is, you know, just really, really, really respecting the rhythm um, and just, you know, sticking to it. So once you have achieved that, that can look like, you know, just playing it bare bone, then you switch gears. Then you speed it up a tiny bit. So say I am I'm now comfortable with this speed. I speed it up. A tiny bit, it's like you're switching gear of a car. A bit faster. And then, okay, I'm comfortable with this speed. Now we switch gear. Obviously this is, I'm just um, exaggerating the jumps just to give you an example of how this might look like. 
But again, I cannot stress enough, you cannot play something fast without playing it slow at first. Um, so here are the five um, steps to um, play anything fast. Number one, don't take it as a measure of success. It is not. Um, playing things in a way that is clean and clear, um, in a way that honors the rhythm with ornamentation, in a way that makes me understand the music, in a way that makes me feel the music is way more important. Um, it's, it's not, I'm not saying it's not important. I do it all the time. I'm known for my super speed, <laughs> but um, it is not a measure for success. So that is, that is just something I want you to bear in mind. Once you have that in your mind, then you need to practice the right way, uh, particularly paying attention to the first part of your, set, your practice where you do your warm ups, your scales, and you strengthen. It's like this is a warm up. Um, and then you, number three, you need to um, go into the building a puzzle mindset, which is, you know, rather than going for the whole composition just focus on something very, very small, which, I, which ties into uh, practicing the right way. Um, don't try to, to eat the elephant in one bite. It's never gonna work, never, okay? Um, one of the things that I teach my students is that even like I break things down into sections, work on that if, and then even within that section, you can just even, make the piece of the puzzle even smaller and more focused and, and loop that. So say I want to go, so, so say I want to practice um, this, this phrase and I want my vibrato to ring um, and I, I just loop it. And then I can I can go make it a scale, and then go back and put it within the um, context of the piece of music that I am practicing. Just an example. Um, and then number four, you need to slow down, <laughs> slow down in order to speed up. And then number five, once you have achieved that, the skeleton you have achieved performing the skeleton in a clear, clean way that respects the rhythm. Now switch gears. And that can happen over days, weeks, it can take time. But if you adapt this strategy, then you are gonna be able to, to play things fast. That's exactly what I teach my students. Um, and I hope that was helpful to you. Again, this is something that um, I would get you into um, thinking stage three onwards really. Um, so if you are a beginner, then uh, you have a very a small list <laughs> of priorities um, for you to take you to the next stage. Everything is in its own time. I hope this is helpful. Um, if you have any questions, do let me know in the comments. I will be sure to respond. Um, if you have want me to cover any other topics, feel free to ask. I'm here to help. Um, hope that was helpful and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.